In this video, we'll be looking at the difference between observational studies and experiments. Before carrying out our comparison, we'll be introduced to some important vocabulary. Let's say we've heard that people who sing have a tendency to be better at math. We can do a statistical study to see if these two things are, in fact, related. The people that we choose to examine are called the subjects or participants. If there is a non-human subject, we can also call it an experimental unit. But since it doesn't make sense to have an experimental unit in this particular study, let's get rid of him. Variables are the what of our study. Since we are looking at whether singing affects math skills, these are our variables. In an experiment, the explanatory variable, the independent variable that is manipulated by the experimenter, is called a factor. Since we are interested in the effect of singing on math skills, in this situation, the measure of the amount of singing or the singing skills is our factor. Now that we understand these terms, let's start our comparison. In an observational study, researchers don't assign factors to participants. They simply observe them. So, for example, people can be selected for the study based on whether or not they sing, or perhaps how much or how well they sing. But the researcher makes no attempt to manipulate these factors in an observational study. In an observational study, while we might find a relationship between variables, it is not possible to determine if one thing causes another because there might be some lurking variables. On the other hand, in an experiment, factors are deliberately manipulated allowing us to determine causality. So in this example, after participants are chosen, they can be randomly given singing assignments of varying levels. Perhaps some of our participants are not allowed to take voice lessons, while others must take one voice lesson per week, and others have to take two. Observational studies are divided into two types, retrospective studies and prospective studies. In a retrospective study, data is collected from the past. So perhaps people have already demonstrated their feelings towards singing and math, and we examine the relationship between this, already existing data. In a prospective study, data is collected as events unfold. So perhaps we might track the student's performance in math and compare it to what we know about their singing ability. In this case, though we are collecting data as events unfold, we don't have the ability to manipulate the variables. Let's take a look at a couple more examples to make sure we understand the difference between an observational study and an experiment. Say we want to check the efficacy of a certain medication. In other words, we want to see how well the medication works. We can select participants with a similar profile then randomly assign the use of the medication at varying levels. Since the factors are deliberately manipulated, this is an experiment. If instead, we found some people who took the medication and others who did not, we would be utilizing data related to observed use of the medication without the power to manipulate this factor, making this an observational study. Let's try one more. If we wanted to know whether hours spent in the library had an effect on GPA, we could select participants with a similar profile and assign specific library use. Perhaps some students are not allowed to go to the library at all, and others are told to study for a specific number of hours in the library per week. This is an experiment since we are manipulating library use. If instead we collected a log of library use, this would be an observational study. Here's a summary of what we've learned. Observational studies do not prove cause and effect. Experiments are done to prove cause and effect. Factors are explanatory variables that are manipulated in an experiment to help us prove cause and effect.